All right, it doesn't look like we're riding our bikes today. Or are we? You know, I grew up in Wisconsin and in the Midwest, it would just hammer down snow all winter long and there was no chance for me to ride my bike outside. And so what I did and a lot of my other friends in the Midwest did, we actually started riding our bikes inside. And today I'm gonna do exactly that. I'm gonna show you how to track stand inside in a way that's clean, doesn't make a huge mess, but also gives you a new skill that you can practice all winter long so that when the sun comes back out, you've got a new skill in your back pocket and you can keep building on top of it. So let's go do exactly that. Welcome to the garage. You can see that on my last ride, I got a little bit lazy and didn't clean this thing up. So that's the first order of business before I even think about taking this bike in the house. It's gotta be clean. I'm not tracking mud in because that's the easiest way to get kicked back out. Here's the thing though. The reason I don't just practice in the garage is that it's ice cold outside and I can only practice in here for maybe like 15 minutes before my hands start turning to ice. I want to be inside where it's warm, where I can be entertained by some other stuff, where I can be distracted a little bit. It takes a little bit of time to learn how to track stand and to really get it locked in. So I want to be able to be consistent. I don't want to be limited by the cold weather or any of that kind of stuff. That's the biggest reason why we're trying to get inside with our bikes. So let me clean this thing up and then we'll go inside and start practicing. I've managed to secure a spot in my house that's pretty low traffic right now. And the few things I'm looking for is kind of a cleared out area here. I'm not doing car because if I miss a little bit of the dirt in the tires, that's not gonna end well. A lot easier to clean up here, although I have to pay attention of how I put my bike down because the metal bits on here can actually scratch up the floor. So you gotta definitely pay attention to that. The only other thing I have here that's really important is this chair right here. This is a big part of how we're gonna learn how to do track stands. So we have this cleared out area. We have some sort of feature that we can use to balance off of and that's really all we need to do. Now, one thing you don't want to do here is find a hallway where you can ping pong off of each side of it. We don't want to be balancing back and forth because actually that's not really what this movement is going to be. You're going to understand this in a minute, but you want to have a little bit of room to move around with the bike. I've got plenty of room right here to get the job done, and that's going to really play into the technique itself. The last thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take my favorite YouTuber's merch and I'm going to use it to make sure I don't leave any bike marks on any of the furniture. So I'm going to drape this over the side of the chair. This is going to make a lot more sense in just a minute when we get to the technique. The best part about all of this is that you can be warm inside and be watching TVs or your favorite YouTube channel while you're learning. Oh, that's awkward. Well, as long as you're here, let me teach you how to track stand. Let's go into all the basics. And the one thing I want to say at first is that balancing your bike isn't locking up both brakes and holding as still as you can until you fall over. Balancing your bike or track standing as we call it is actually working with the bike and using your pedal pressure to keep the bike balanced underneath you. So balance is actually kind of a side effect of everything else that we're doing using the pedal pressure, using the brakes and all the other elements that go into it. So you've kind of carved out your spot at home where you are. Maybe you have a coffee table, you have a chair, a wall, whatever. I have a box here in the warehouse and I'm gonna use it to show you all the basics to get you started track standing. And by the time I'm done, you'll be able to practice this all winter. And by the time spring rolls around, you'll be able to just balance in place without the aid of a box or a chair or any of that kind of stuff. You're gonna be good to go. So let's dive right into it. Welcome to the Shred Spot. This is the warehouse where I make all of my bike tutorial videos. And behind me, you can see Large Marge. This yellow box right here that resembles a stick of margarine is an immovable object, just like the immovable object that you likely have in your living room or wherever you are practicing this. So the first thing I'm gonna do is actually put my front wheel into Large Marge, and I'm gonna use that to push all of my weight from both the bike and my body into that front wheel. So let's get on the bike and start with that. Okay, I'm gonna try this kind of top-down angle because this is really important of how we've got it set up and I don't know if the side view or the front view are really gonna show this in the same way. So bear with me here. What we wanna do to get this whole thing started, we wanna be parallel with the object that we're balancing with. And so for me, I've got this box here, you at home, maybe you have a couch or whatever. Now, what I wanna start by doing is putting my front wheel into the box at a 45 degree angle. And the reason for that is that we're gonna be pushing a lot of our pedal pressure and a lot of the bike into that front wheel to balance ourselves. So we wanna make sure we have really strong contact going there. The next thing we wanna do is actually grab both brakes to keep the bike in place because now we're gonna stand up on the bike. Our feet are flat on the pedals, so both pedals are actually on the same level and that gives us a really strong platform to stand on. If one foot's higher than the other, it can get a little bit wonky when you're trying to practice this. So I like to have both pedals flat when I'm doing that, just a nice stable base for the rest of our body position. 
So the next step of this whole process is to actually let go of the front brake and your bike is gonna feel like it's swapping a little bit left and right and that's okay. That's where we start working on this whole balance thing. So you're not even using your back brake, you're using pedal pressure to continue pushing the bike into that front wheel and because it's pushing the front wheel into that object, it should act as kind of a brake. So it won't be catastrophic to let go of your front brake, but it's gonna feel a little bit different. And that's really where we wanna to get to because your pedal pressure is taking the place of your brakes. And pedal pressure is the most important part of track standing. So it's really important that we get this right and we get a good feel for how our pedals are pushing and making the bike do what it does. Now comes the moment of truth. So you've got your hand off the rear brake already. You're pushing on the pedals to keep the bike moving forward. And now we're gonna take our finger off the front brake. So what should happen is the bike's gonna swap a little bit left and right, and you're really gonna have to start working on your balance here. But what's gonna happen is that your pedal pressure is gonna replace the front brake because it's gonna keep pushing all of the momentum of the bike into that object that you're leaning against. So here I go, I took my front brake off and you can see it's kind of swapping back and forth. One thing that I find really helps me is if I move my knees around, that helps me get a nice wide base and helps me keep the bike underneath me. So this is a great thing to really practice for quite some time until you start to feel really comfortable with it. This is a great way to start getting balance on the bike. Feel free to stay in this position as long as you want until you start feeling really confident that you could hold it like this for a really long time. This is definitely like a big chunk of what you wanna to learn to get the ball rolling. But this next step is like baby bird leaving the nest. So we're actually gonna lean back away from the obstacle. And what we're gonna do is slightly back pedal and push our weight backwards. And what that's gonna do, it's gonna pull the wheel, the front wheel away from the box. And then as soon as that happens, we're gonna push on the pedals and come right back to the box. So watch. And we're gonna continue pushing into the box just like that. This is how track standing happens. And just to fast forward a little bit, you're eventually gonna be replacing this box with just touching your front brake. But this next step is kind of like baby bird leaving the nest. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna pull away from the box. And how we do that, we back pedal slightly. And what that does is disengage the hub. If you've been old enough to drive a, a car with clutch, it's just like pushing in the clutch. So you're gonna back pedal about a quarter pedal and you're gonna push your weight backwards and that's gonna pull the front wheel away from the box. As soon as you get back, you push back on the pedals and ram your front wheel back to where it was. So just a quick back and then you push on the pedals and you put your front wheel back in. That's all you gotta do. As you get more comfortable and confident doing that, you can do a couple times in a row. So back and in, back, in, back, in. This is like most of track standing right here. The only difference is that when you actually are track standing away from an obstacle like this, you're using your front brake instead of using the box here. So practice this as much as you possibly can because this is really where the magic happens. You are now working on your pedal pressure to move the bike back and forth. So it's disengaging the hub to roll it backwards and pushing on the pedals to push it forwards. And that back and forth motion is how you keep the bike underneath you this entire time. Let me show you again. Back pedal, pedal. Back pedal, pedal. Back pedal, pedal. And you can see I don't need my brakes for any of this. So far we've been using our pedal pressure here to push that front wheel into this object here and that's been helping us stay balanced. Now the next step of this process to really bring it home is to replace the front brake for the obstacle. So what you've been doing is rolling away from this stop here and then pushing back into it. And now what we wanna be able to do is just roll into our front brake and then roll away from our front brake. And so all we're gonna do is the same thing where we pedal away from the obstacle, but instead of going all the way to put our front wheel into the obstacle again, we're gonna grab our front brake and that's gonna stop us. And so what we're gonna do, we're gonna back away and then right before we get up to the front of it, we're gonna grab our front brake. And then we're gonna come back again and into the front brake. Away from it and into the front brake. It's the exact same thing as if you had your front wheel into it and you're back pedaling away and pushing into it. You just grab your front brake before you hit it. 
So back, front break, back, front break, back, front break. And now you can track stand. This is track standing right here. That's all it takes. So you went from using your pedal pressure to push the front wheel into something to using your front brake to replace that obstacle. And now you rock the bike back and forth using your pedal pressure and your front brake. So those are all the things you need to get set up learning how to track stand. You'll be dialed by the time spring comes around if you keep following this stuff and working on your pedal pressure and your balance point and all that stuff. This video is actually inspired by another one that I made, which is the five tricks to practice in a parking lot before you ride, which you can check out right here. If you're really digging this and you wanna learn some more mountain bike tutorials, go here to this playlist.